UK Law Weekly Podcast with me, your host, Marcus Cleaver. This week we will be discussing Total Limited and Commissioners for HMRC. And the citation for this case is 2018 UKSC 44. And this case takes us once again back into tax law, but fortunately for both me and you, it's not especially complicated and opens up some quite interesting principles of the law. The tax in question is Value Added Tax, or VAT, and it's governed in the UK by the Value Added Tax Act 1994. In particular, we will be focusing on Section 84, which basically says that if traders want to dispute the amount of VAT that they owe to the government, then they have to pay first and then appeal afterwards. This doesn't exactly put the trader in the most advantageous position, especially when compared to the payment of other taxes such as income tax, capital gains tax or stamp duty where such a payment does not have to be made prior to an appeal. That comparative disadvantage is the basis for this case today as Total challenged the pay first requirement through the hierarchy up to the Supreme Court where we picked the case up. The justices began by examining EU law which at first glance might appear a little unusual given that this case is looking at the domestic payment of VAT but in actual fact this is regulated by an EU directive and therefore certain principles of EU law can apply. In particular the idea of equivalence was closely examined as this sets out that claims which have their origins in EU law such as the one that we are discussing today should not be treated less favourably than claims made under UK law. The argument from Total follows that the requirement for them to pay before appealing in respect of VAT contravenes this principle of equivalence because other taxes that are not regulated by EU law are not subject to such an onerous stipulation. For equivalence to be established, there has to be a comparator. And while it might seem obvious where the comparison lies for taxation from Total's case, it is important to note that the comparison is context specific. What we mean by this is that it's not enough to say that both the subject of the claim and the comparator are similar by nature, but rather it is necessary to look at the overall purpose and characteristics of both things. By carrying out more than a superficial analysis, the Supreme Court found that VAT is not quite the same as the other taxes which make up Total's claim. For example, it is ultimately the consumer who has to pay VAT. It is just collected by the trader and then passed on to the government. On the other hand, for something like income tax, it's simply the person who has received the income who pays the tax directly to the government. There is no middleman to speak of. That role of being a middleman is enough of a unique element to create a distinction between VAT and the other forms of taxation used as comparators. Lord Briggs gave the lead judgment and perhaps anticipated some criticism of his reasoning in advance as he pointed out that this decision does not mean that it is impossible for VAT to ever hope of having a true comparator. That would undermine the overall idea of equivalence and not allow it to function properly. Instead, Briggs sought to emphasise the importance of performing an in-depth comparison that looks at a range of features and then minimise the centrality of the principle of equivalence in the context of EU law by noting that it was more of a side issue in some of the key cases such as Reamster in 2005 and Littlewoods in 2012. Furthermore, it was pointed out that even if there was a true comparison with other forms of taxation, this would most likely not have made a difference to the outcome of the case. The basis for this is that the principle of equivalence is not seeking to provide a claimant with the best possible procedure for the resolution of their case, but instead to offer something that is broadly favourable based on the comparison that has been established. Overall, this approach is probably rather restrictive as while it sets out the affirmative case for why a comparison should not be made, It does little, if anything, to explain the problems with using income tax as a comparator. In other words, there is no real justification for why the pay-first requirement exists in its current form and how it represents a reasonable procedure for taxpayers to follow compared to that for income tax.
we know that in these circumstances the trader is little more than a middleman, and that for the justices this was a key feature. But it's hard to know why that was the case. After all, it doesn't directly impact on the appeal process itself. Furthermore, we have already mentioned briefly how the pay-first requirement can undermine an appeal brought by an individual, but little is made of this as a pertinent feature. Admittedly, this is perhaps drifting a little into an area that is properly to do with government policy, but then again the principle of equivalence is one that ultimately demands a review of how the government sets out rules and procedures through legislation. By setting such strict criteria to establish a comparison, It means that the courts are not able to effectively do their job as a proper analysis of the case is stopped before it even has a chance to begin. This might not be a judicial review, but that does not mean the courts should not use all the means at their disposal to hold the government to account when it is necessary to do so. Well, thank you very much for tuning into this episode of the UK Law Weekly podcast, and thanks as ever to bensound.com. Quick reminder that my course on commercial law is still available on my website at uklawweekly.com forward slash videos and you'll find a link there to the commercial law course. Thanks as ever to everyone who leaves a kind review on iTunes. It really makes a difference and helps the podcast become more discoverable to other people who are interested in the various legal issues of the day, especially those impacting the UK. And in the run-up to Brexit, I hope to be doing more podcasts along these lines and sort of covering some of the key cases that will come up. Well, I'll be back with another episode next week, but for now, bye!